Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about science. I've been documenting climate junk science for about a dozen years. Climate science is dominated by non-existent correlations being used to make fake claims of causation. And I'm seeing exactly the same thing with claims which are being made about COVID-19. Here's one from three weeks ago. Over the last two weeks, cases have risen by 84% in states that don't require wearing masks in public. In states where mask wearing is mandatory, cases have fallen by 25%. Well, there you have it. Case closed. Everybody needs to be wearing masks. But before I slap my mask on, I'm going to take a look at the current data. The two states in the West with mandatory mask rules are California and New Mexico. Let's see how they're doing. California has mandatory mask laws and the number of cases there has more than tripled over the past month. And the same thing's true in New Mexico. The number of cases there has tripled over the past month. They implemented their mask rule in the middle of May. It doesn't look like the mandatory mask rules in California and New Mexico are working out very well. Tennessee doesn't have mandatory mask rules over the entire state but one county which does have them in Tennessee is Shelby County. Shelby County has a mask rule and cases there are skyrocketing. Doesn't look like the masks are working out too well in Shelby County either. So let's look at what's really going on. I showed this slide yesterday in my herd immunity video. This graph has one blue dot for each of the 50 states. Across the x-axis is deaths per million population. And plotted up the y-axis is the one-day percent change in total cases in that state. This graph makes it very clear what's going on. States which have a large deaths per million population have a small number of new cases, and vice versa. States which have not had a lot of deaths are tending to have larger increases in the number of cases. The explanation for this is very simple. States which have suffered a lot of deaths, like New York and New Jersey, are very close to herd immunity. Thus, they're not getting a lot of new cases. Many states with smaller death rates have not yet achieved herd immunity, so they're seeing a higher increase in the number of new cases. This will probably go on for a few more weeks. New York is one state which is very close to herd immunity. They had a big surge back in March and April when the governor was sending thousands of sick people into nursing homes. It's likely that most of the people in New York City got exposed to the virus during March and April when they had this big spike. But now the virus is having a more difficult time finding people to infect. Because of this, the number of new cases has dropped off sharply. Now let's look at California, which is at the opposite end of the country, and has also seen the opposite trend from New York there's seen a large increase in the number of cases. Both New York and California have mandatory mask rules. One of them has seen a large increase and the other one isn't. This makes it very clear that masks are not the controlling factor of the trend. What is the controlling factor is herd immunity. States which have had more than 500 deaths per million population are generally seeing a small number of new cases. Now let's look at some other factors which are driving up the new case counts. The gray bars on this graph show the number of new daily tests, which you can see has been increasing steadily over the past few months. If you increase the number of tests which you're giving, you're of course also going to see a corresponding increase in the number of positive results. This isn't rocket science. It's basic mathematics, which very few, if any, people in the mainstream media seem to understand. The more important line on this graph is the blue line, which is the percent positive COVID-19 tests. This means it's normalized to the number of tests which are being given. And as you can see, it's much lower now than it was during the peak back in April. But if your goal is propaganda rather than factual information, then you'll just use the number of positive tests. Another thing which is driving up the case counts is very apparent from this graph. After keeping people locked up in their homes for months and arresting people who tried to work, authorities suddenly decided it was a really good idea to let tens of thousands of people pack into the streets to protest for social justice. This brilliant decision by government and our health authorities led to a huge spike in the number of cases. Dr. Fauci was happy to tell states that they needed to lock down and happy to tell people not to go to Trump rallies, but for some reason he forgot to tell them not to go to the BLM protests. 
Apparently it must have just slipped his mind. The vast majority of the protesters were wearing masks, which gave them a false sense of security, leading to a huge increase in the number of infections. Just today, the CDC says that the coronavirus pandemic could be under control in four to eight weeks if everyone wore a mask starting now. Let's take a look at that claim and see if it makes any sense. It's pretty easy to see that wearing masks isn't working in California. It's also not working in New Mexico. And it's not working in Memphis. Now let's think about what the motivation is for wearing a mask. Theoretically, they keep people from spreading the virus. They keep people from becoming infected. And as long as there's a large percentage of the low-risk population which has not yet been exposed to the virus, the population remains at risk. Which means that you'll never be able to get the virus under control and never be able to return to normal as long as you're keeping people from being exposed. The original theory behind the lockdowns was that everybody was going to get exposed sooner or later, but we wanted to slow it down in order to keep hospitals from getting overloaded. But now the goals have changed, and the current goal seems to be to get everybody wearing a mask. My theory is that CDC recognizes that we're headed towards herd immunity, and they want to be able to take credit for it. And if they can get everybody wearing a mask between now and then, they can say, look, we saved you. There's no logic behind what CDC is saying. I think they're playing the same scam which academics pulled for the ozone hole. It's the old snake oil scam. We sold you snake oil and you got better and it's because of us. COVID alarmists want us to believe that their lockdowns and their masks saved us. But reality shows that that's simply not true. Sweden never had lockdowns and they never mandated masks. And they had a much lower death rate than many places which did both. Sweden took an actual science-based approach. The theory behind their plan was to isolate the elderly and other people at risk and get the younger, low-risk population to herd immunity as quickly as possible. Sweden didn't do a great job protecting the elderly, as you can see in this big spike they had back in April. But since then, their death rate has dropped off sharply, showing that they're approaching herd immunity. They did this with a minimal amount of damage to their economy and without violating human rights. Sweden had no lockdowns and no mask mandates. They use the principles of science, the exact opposite of what's gone on in the United States. Here's my favorite waiter at my favorite restaurant. He's working hard and is uncomfortable wearing a mask, so he keeps touching his face. Then he gets germs all over his hands and touches your food. This goes on at restaurants in the United States millions of times a day. Not long ago, he said that people should not be wearing masks. Right now in the United States, People should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it? Because people are listening really no, closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet. But it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. And often, there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. And that's exactly what's going on. I see people constantly fiddling with their mask, constantly taking it on and off, touching their face, and then they touch the produce at the store, infecting it for the next person who comes along. There's also lots of fear-mongering going on about children, saying that they should wear masks and their teddy bears should too. Although children are lower risk, the risk is not risk-free to children or adults. Nearly 17,000 children have now tested positive for COVID-19 in Florida. If people were thinking clearly, they would recognize that's good news, not bad news. Let me explain why. As of July 11th, there's only 31 U.S. COVID deaths under the age of 15. Let's compare that to flu, which typically kills hundreds of children in that age group. For people under the age of 15, COVID-19 is much less deadly than the flu is. Nothing is risk-free in this world. Lots more children die going back and forth to school than have died from COVID-19. Schools are open in many countries in Europe, including Sweden, where they never shut down. And they're not seeing any problems with having the schools open. The sooner we get our healthy young population exposed, the sooner they can get back to their normal life. 
All this fear-mongering by the press, keeping schools shut down, and making teddy bears wear masks is hurting our children. We need to stop doing this. Dr. Fauci is an immunologist, not an epidemiologist. His expertise is vaccines, and everything looks to him like a good opportunity for a vaccine. The United States needs an actual epidemiologist in charge like Dr. Anders Tegnell, who led Sweden's successful effort. He says that the world went mad with lockdowns and understands that the key to getting past an epidemic like this is getting to herd immunity. By contrast, Dr. Fauci is doing the exact opposite. He seems to be doing everything he can to keep the United States from arriving at herd immunity. And as long as we're not at herd immunity, the misery will just continue. CDC says that wearing masks will solve the problem in six to eight weeks. But that doesn't make any sense. If the masks are actually keeping people from getting exposed, all that it does is prolong the misery. Sooner or later, the only way past an epidemic is for the population to become immune. I'm pretty sure that Dr. Fauci understands this, so we should be asking the question, why is he dragging this out? If we had have done what Sweden did, we would have been largely done with this epidemic already without the massive damage to the economy or to human rights. Toto is not impressed with what's going on in the United States the past four months. He thinks we can do a lot better. Visit him on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.